Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. I've got another background idea using aqua pigments again. If you aren't familiar with them, they're liquid watercolors from Brutus Monroe, and I've just been having a ball playing with them lately. If you're interested, at the end I'll link to another video I made where I show you a few more ideas, but today I'm just going to focus on this one technique. Bubbles! I was inspired by my friend Annalisa. She uses bubbles in her video to remove color from an ink blended background, kind of like you would with uh, water droplets. It's really a neat idea, and I've got her video linked down below. Make sure you check it out. But it reminded me of the colored bubble technique that I'm going to show you here. You start with a couple squirts of uh, liquid dish soap, and then add um, a good amount of your aqua pigments. It's, it's really concentrated, so a little goes a long way. But then we're going to add in a little bit of water and mix it all up. I, I found it was easier just to use a chopstick to mix it up. And then I'm going to blow a bunch of bubbles in it and I'll pick some of those bubbles up with watercolor paper and I'll use my heat tool to pop those bubbles and dry the paper um, so that you, I build up layers of color here. Uh, it's pretty key when you're mixing your solution not to add too much water. If you water it down too much then basically you dilute the color and you have to do even more layers. Um, so if, if you can keep the solution um, pretty thick, it'll go faster. And I realized as I was playing with it that the big bubbles make really cool um, marks on the paper, but the tiny bubbles that are almost like foam, those will give you more concentrated color. It transfers faster. So I, I used a combination of both. And you can see I've switched colors now here. I'm using the orange. And I made quite a few backgrounds in, in orange and in pink. Um, well, different shades, magenta and, and fuchsia. Um, and after I get a few orange backgrounds done here, I'm going to add in some of the coral. And I'll just add the coral right into the orange. I don't need to, to completely start over. You can see that's what I'm doing here. Just picking up some coral and adding it right into the orange. And then mixing it up and blowing more bubbles. This is a lot of fun. Um, I actually, I was doing this while my daughter was at school. And then I took a break, picked her up from school, and she came in and played with a lot of it too. <laughs> so we had a, a fun craft day blowing bubbles. And since I added more pigment to this solution, the color is transferring even faster this time around. It's a little bolder. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> you don't necessarily have to use watercolor paper. Any heavy cardstock uh, will work. You may have... Um, some more warping, but you could just sandwich your paper in a paper bag and then iron it and that would flatten it back out. So don't worry if you don't have watercolor paper. But I had it. I use it a lot, so that's what I'm using here. And you can see I took one of my orange backgrounds and I'm dipping it into the coral mixture and that just uh, gives me a little more variety and more interest to that background. Now I'm taking some of those pink backgrounds that I made and since it's completely dry I'm gonna dip it into the coral and it creates a lot of fun color here. I'm getting two tones. These colors work nicely together. I wouldn't try to do opposite colors. You might make mud but since these these colors coordinate it worked really great. I love the way these backgrounds turned out. And I did that a few times. So once I've got my backgrounds, they're all dry. I'll show them to you here, a couple of pink ones. I like how this one turned out. It accidentally got a little heart shape in there, which I thought was cool. And I kept some of the um, orange papers orange. And then I did some of the combinations too. I thought the oranges would be good guy colors for masculine cards. 
and I decided to do them all the same. I'm going to use a, a wonky stitched rectangle die to cut all my pieces out. And I'm just going to walk you through one card here. I made them all the same. I grabbed a bunch of card bases. Most of them are gray. And then I've got a thin piece of fun foam that I'll sandwich in between the, the background and the, the card base there. I like this fun foam from the dollar store. It's about half the thickness of regular foam tape. So it gives me a little bit of dimension and you get like 30 pieces in a pack for a buck. So it's a good deal. And it doesn't give me too much lift. It, it gives me enough dimension to be noticeable, but not a super thick card. And after it dries, I'm just going to take some stacked die cuts. You notice I stacked a couple layers of gray and then glitter cardstock on the top. That gray is just going to pull in the, the gray from the card base. And I stacked, I think, three layers together. Just glue them together and you get a nice heavyweight sentiment. And then I'll just glue it onto my card. And for each of my cards I cut either hearts or candles or some sort of other little accent piece. In this case it's three candles to go with happy birthday. And I'm just going to glue these candles in place. And the candles are, I mean they're glitter paper, everything is glitter paper on top. But I wanted to kind of dress the candles up a little bit more and kind of define them a little bit. Oops, don't forget the eye for birthday. <laughs> but um, for my candles, I thought it would be kind of uh, just a little extra something if I take a silver pen. It's a, a Uniball Signo, um, a silver gel pen here. And I'm just going to draw in a wick real quick on each of these candles. That defines them a little bit more, adds a little interest, and it also brings in the gray for the card base around it. It's kind of hard to see here. Just a second, let me uh, let me show you a better close-up. All right, now you can see the silver wick. Looks cool, right? So it just uh, just defines those candles a little bit better. I'm not going to make you watch me uh, put eight more cards together, so I'll just show you briefly what I did for the remaining card bases. I cut them all out with the wonky stitch die, and then I used different die cut sentiments. Um, I think half of them are birthdays, because I use birthdays a lot, and a, a couple thank you cards. I've got the candles there again with the silver. And then with that little heart, I thought it would cute, be cute to make a, a love card. So I did that one. It's always handy to have a congratulations card for weddings. Another birthday and another thank you card. And this thank you card, instead of putting it on a gray base, I put it on a white pearl base. I like that one too, just a little different. So I've got some close-ups here. You can see all the details a little bit better. And I know I sped through that, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask me down in the comments below. Down below I've also got links to my blog where you can find specific products that I've used. I've got a link to Annalise's video that inspired me to play with bubbles again. And then I've also got a link to the Brutus Monroe blog where I'm guest designing again. Yay! If you liked today's video, please be sure to subscribe and click the bell. That way you don't miss any new videos. I've got links to a few other videos I made using Brutus Monroe products. And as always, thanks for watching!